Hey, what's up, everyone? This is your co-host, Nico. And Irvin. And today, this is Shining Spotlight, the stream where we highlight creators in order to inspire you guys. Today, we have a man with amazing hand and craftsmanship. He has cosplayed as various different cosplays vastly across the board from Omni-Man and Invincible to Granddad and Boondocks. He is an award-winning cosplayer. He is also a powerlifter winner of the Midwest Open. And he's been featured on numerous platforms on social media, such as even Viz Media, you know, which we all know, Amazon Prime, and many others. Today, we invite and welcome the co-founder of Cosplay or of Chicago POC Cosplayers, Venture Bros Cosplay. Thank you so much for coming on today. Hey, welcome. thank you guys for having me. You know. Oh man, I'm like to be honest with you. Like I see, like you actually have a lot of like variety in a lot of the cosplays that you do. You know, it's not like yeah, a lot of the same. It's very different than from what I see. You know, this is like not a knock on anybody else, but like for what I see you do on social media, it's just like you know, I have to give you that a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, you know, a lot of cosplayers. Uh, you know, I think uh, everybody does their own thing. Uh, me, I I mainly focus on doing things that are kind of outside the box. That a lot of people won't do like you mentioned granddad i've never seen another granddad cosplayer you know yes, yeah. <laughs> so, so that for someone like for someone like me that's like okay i gotta tap with this you know so yeah man that uh you know it did real well uh but it, it got shared on the boondocks page too boondocks bootleg their, their actual official page um and uh yeah man uh that was a fun one. As a matter of fact i'm gonna do the new version of granddad too for the oh. uh the reboot. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Already come with that. Dark form, so I was like, okay, I got it. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, so how long did it take actually with that one in particular, how long did that take for you to like kind of put that together? Um so uh me and my ex, we were watching Boondocks and it pretty much just hit me like, oh man, I should do Granddad. And uh, I'm pretty I, I started doing old characters. I had just done Uncle Hyro. And I then I was like, okay, I could pull off Granddad. Let me see how long it takes to get the stuff from Amazon, like as far as the clothes. That took like maybe like two days. Uh, once I got like all his clothes and stuff, uh, pretty much uh, literally like maybe maybe three days max it took for me to get all the stuff, take the pictures, uh, and then edit them. And hey, it's good to go, you know. And then once once we did that. Um, it just, it picked up and, you know, everybody loves Boondocks, so it went viral. I didn't expect it to do as well as it did, but it, it went viral quick. And, you know, next thing I know, a lot of people are hitting me up, like, man, you did, how'd you do that granddad? And, man, how'd you think of that? And just, you know, so I was really happy about how it went, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm like, I, I'm to be honest with you, like, when I see your cosplay, it's like, man, I'm like, I, it, it's one of those things where it's like kind of inspires you, because I'm like, I've never actually, like, done, like, a like a le legit cosplay, or at least for what I would uh -huh. consider to be like a, a cosplay. It's like the most I might wear is like I'll throw on like a yukata, but that's to me is not cosplay. That's um, uh -huh. more so just you know enjoying another person's culture, you know. Yeah, that's, right. you know uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of like how how did you get into this? Like you know, in terms of like where did you start at? All right, so pretty much, um, I did not know about nerd culture until twenty fifteen. Um, 2015, I, you know, came back from Afghanistan, uh, and I booked a room at the Marriott in Atlanta. It was for me, my brother, and my best friend. So we had no clue about Dragon Con. Luckily oh, enough, when I came back from, from my, uh, for my six months, came back for 30 days, that was the first spot I went to. Next thing you know, we're in the hotel, we're on the elevator, you got... You know, Xena Warrior Princess, you got Sailor Moon, you know, you got Ruby Red. And, they, and they're all they're all looking at us, you know, six. We're you, we're just like casuals. So, you know, they're looking at us thinking that we don't know the culture either. You know, and they were like, hey, have you ever heard of? I was like, Xena? And then, you know, I was like, wait, Sailor Moon? I was like, wait, what is happening? Why is it like a party or something? So they're like, no, it's Dragon Con. And then they invited us to drink and you know, at Dragon Con, that's a huge party con. So they're like, yo, we should come to the bar with us. So we went down to the bar, and that's when we saw all those cosplayers. And Dragon Con is a little different from a, a lot of conventions because it's so cosplay heavy. 
Like you'll have like half the attendees at Dragon Con, which is like a hundred thousand people. You got about at least ten to twenty thousand cosplayers. So it was like every it was like being in a different world. Yeah, so don't they have like, like a whole like um, line or whatever, like a uh, parade that they do at Dra uh, Dragon Con. Yeah, yeah. On the Saturday they got that parade. It's just humongous, you know, all through downtown Atlanta. So yeah, once um we checked that out, you know, I was like, all right, man, we gotta get into this. And like I said, my brother, uh, he's the one who kicked it off. You know, he started doing a bunch of Spider-Man cosplays. So you know, once he did that, I was like, all right, let me try it out. And then um, the way I got into building my own cosplays was because nothing fit me, especially at that time period. Um, after I got out the military and once started cosplaying, I was about three or five. So nothing fit me whatsoever. Like everything I ordered was too small, you know, coming from China, it was just like, wouldn't work. And I was like, okay. And then um, I was like, I'm just have to figure out kind of how to make my own stuff. And then that's when I started watching YouTube tutorials. I started contacting a lot of like cosplayers, like the famous ones, because those are the only ones I knew about at the time. And um, they weren't, none of them were really answering me. But uh, Nightmage, Nightmage and Papa Bear are probably the only two who actually responded to my messages about like how to start, how to build stuff. And you know, Papa Bear, since he was from Chicago too, you know, he had no problem letting me know like, hey, this is how you build this. This is called EVA foam, but you want to make sure you prime it with mod first. You want to make sure you you know you cut it with this and then you weather it with this. And I didn't know what the fuck any of those terms meant. So I was just like, what? And then, you know, but he was cool enough to where he made videos specifically to show me how to do these things. So that's pretty much how I kicked off, you know? So, okay. So he's kind of like, in a way, kind of like the, the one is like, let me bring you on this journey, you know? Papa Bear is definitely the one who pretty much like at the time made me like his apprentice. And it was like, he showed me the ropes, man. He showed me the game, you know? And, uh, yeah, I was fortunate enough because Pop Bears, a, and he had a huge platform. So for him to have helped me, he could have just been like everybody else and I didn't pay attention. But, you know, he was cool enough dude to where he was like, hey, you know, we have a workshop. You know, I'm about to build this at the third. You want to come? I'm like, all right. And then that's, that's yeah, pretty much, you know, he took me under his wing. So is that kind of where the, um, the Chicago POC cosplayers kind of got ready to get started up or? Okay, so the way we got Chicago PLC cosplayers, uh, let's push it to a couple months down the road, a little bit after 2016. Probably about, I think it was January 2017 we started. So there's a con in Chicago called Con on Delete. And I think I've heard there was it. a lot of, yeah, oh, you heard of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of black cosplayers that were there, but none of us were really like, talking to each other because we didn't know each other. So it was like everybody's walking by themselves. Me, it was me and my brother there, so we were cool. But it was like nobody was really messing with each other. And then, you know, we'd go up and talk to everybody and meet everybody and everybody's cool. It's just they don't know you, so they ain't really say nothing. So after that experience, that's when I hit a Papa Bear, like, hey, you know, it's a lot of Chicago cosplayers and, you know, we might as well make a group, man, because none of us know each other and we can start going to these cons and stuff together. And then you could teach the others how to build stuff too. And then we could just have a group like that. And he was like, he was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Next thing you know, the next day, we pretty much started building the website and the Facebook page. And then, you know, he he had a, he has a lot of clout. So he just made a post like, hey, if you're PLC, you want to join Chicago PLC, come on down. Next thing you know, we had like 300 people join the group in like a week. So it was like, all right, cool, you know, and that's how that got started. Okay, okay, you know, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I just, I just find it fascinating to always see like the beginning of, you know, something great. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah the beginning of a journey, you know. You know, I'm, I just picture it almost being like, you know, like even though, like, and of course, this is in a good way, but like, I just picture it being like, come with me, my young apprentice. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'll teach well, you the ways of the people, man. I tell a lot of people that, you know, Papa Bear. I don't even. I'll try to. Play with that and nothing. I just tell straight up, I better won't show me the ropes, you know. So, Interesting. Yeah, I, huh? No, I can I can imagine you probably had a lot of people now coming to you like, show me the ropes, you know, show oh, me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a lot of people, man, a lot of people. And you know, that's one good thing about Chicago PLC. Um, year one, you know, since COVID and stuff, we kind of slowed down with our workshops. 
But year one, we were hosting workshops like once a month, you know, and, you know, it was for kids, you know, and it was for like other group members, you know, and they could come because Chris, you know, he had a huge house. So, you know, his basement level is pretty much just like a giant man cave. Now he had like all the cosplay like tools there. So it was like we would have like, you know, like 15 people. And we got video a couple of times where we had like a workshop. There was just a ton of people in there building. So it 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 came, it the group became a very big asset to people who are aspiring to be cosplayers. And it became a big connection to work with children if they like were interested. You know? Okay, okay. Hmm. So all right, I'm a little curious. Going back to uh going back to you your you mentioned about the the process with uh the design for these pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh take us back through like all right. I what how 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 do you go about it when you're prepping for each of these uh each of these characters because uh I like okay. Obviously, you've done you know what your popular uh, one of the more popular ones uh, uh, we've seen you for is uh, Mario, Doctor Mario, Omni <laughs> Man, uh, e- even uh, Uncle Uncle Iro. And yeah. uh, don't you butcher that name? It's Uncle Iro. Iro, my bad, my bad. You gotta be <clears> a true <throat> fan, man. True fan. All right, yeah, so I'll give, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Okay. But uh, like one of, one of the key things I noticed, what a lot of a lot of your different uh, works is that, uh, it, when you're doing them, it's not like you're, uh, it's not like you're entirely making you making yourself like exactly that character. Is is as if you actually put your style and spin on that character. Uh, I, I don't see you like having a like you basically force your hair straight a certain way or right, right, you know, right. trying to you know, trying to make up a, a certain way. It's like you put your own spinning style with it and it, it and it works. I, I'm like I, I'm a personal fan of the Doctor Mario one, and I'm I like, it, I, 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 like I love the mess out of how you pull those off. All different editions of them. Yeah, man. So when I cosplay, I okay, and I don't judge anybody who does who uses straight hair wigs or anything like that Mm -hmm. you know that's fine for them i just don't feel that i look right with them i don't feel that i can put on a straight hair wig and ever look right so you know i feel like with afrocentric wigs i look completely fine and with characters i do like the unique especially because i cosplay a lot of anime and even with like mario so with a lot of anime characters they have different color hair so I like the character. I like the character design. So I'm, I'm digging their hair color and everything. But I want it to fit me. If I want to put myself in that character's shoes, I want to look like that character, but I want to look like myself, too. Mm-hmm. So that's why you'll see me with, like, blue dreadlocks or you'll see me with, like, a white fro or something like that because I need I, I feel right looking like a black version of that character. You know, and I don't need nobody to call me a black version of that character, but that's how I'm gonna do it because I feel like I look better with an afro or with dreads or you know, saying with micro braids. I feel better Afrocentric, so that I gotta do it like that. So when I do choose a character, that's the if they're not black already, that's the first thing I'm looking at. You know, like with Mario, especially even that Doctor Mario. Mario has brown hair, so I was like, okay, if I'm gonna do Mario. Of course, I'm not going to buy no wig for it, but I do want to have the top of my hair bright, you know, so that and that's I'll uh, buy some like brown hair color and I'll check out um, some different editing apps to color my hair. So I'll put in the because sometimes you can't get access to like hair dye that's exactly the color. So sometimes it will take some editing. So I'll uh, go ahead. I get the color, the hairspray, and the hair wax, put it in my hair, throw it on Photoshop, check out some editing apps for hair, put that color on, and boom. Then we'll go with it. And then that's when you'll see, like, me as Mario, but it'll look like Mario's black the whole time, you know? Uh, all right, all right. So, actually, going going to your materials here, because uh, I, rem- I remember... Uh, I remember speaking with uh with, with a few other cosplayers before, 
in regards to uh to materials a lot of them you know pretty much uh like the throw they're all like they they get their hookups from thrift stores or certain deals on uh, <laughs> other, uh, uh other uh uh, underground places uh some go to etsy some uh just find whatever in their house like mm -hmm. you know how you go about your material search here for for those that are interested okay so uh it, it all depends some characters you do like omni man i had no choice but to order that because that's a zentai suit mm -hmm. so with omni man suit i ordered i found out a guy who uh he makes you know he does pretty prints for the zentai suits and I asked him, I was like, hey, can you do one of those for Omni-Man's design? And he was like, yeah. So I was like, how much that cost? And uh, uh, his page is Super Geek Designs. And he's the one who, you know, he created the Omni-Man. And I went with it. But most of my cosplay, especially the anime ones, those are like materials that, like, you just got to kind of go on Amazon and hope you can find all the materials to put that cosplay together. Me, because of my size, I haven't been too lucky with going to the thrift stores and stuff because it's just the stuff that i might get there it, it, it's not gonna fit me you know what i'm saying yeah so and I, i'm not gonna lie that's kind of like, in a way it's kind of badass being like man i'm so right. fat that literally like <laughs> like they can't all, you know they can't make anything for yeah, me because yeah. i'll go there man i'll see a jacket i like and i'll be like oh that look perfect for that character can't even get it past my shoulder so I'm like, all right. <laughs> like all right that's not gonna work <laughs> but um yeah and sometimes man like when I first started, I was ordering stuff um, from like Easy Cosplay and Big Costumes, and theirs were always too small. But um, I figured out a way, kind of like, okay, if I just take the pictures and I'm not going to a con with this or anything, then maybe I can work with it. So I've had stuff that where like um, a good example is when I did Demon Slayer Gives Jack, so it wouldn't fit around my whole body. So what I had to do was I had to literally cut a slit and half the back to where it came, you know, to where it looked like it closed. But in the pictures, you couldn't tell. In the pictures, <laughs> they would look like fit perfectly fine. But if you were in my house, you was like, what? Hey, man, <laughs> what happened to the back, you know? But see, in the, when I'm doing the pictures and they're just digital edit, you're not going to see that. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, some certain times I did have to sacrifice, but with me, I have to be a little more creative. I can't rely on like the thrift store or stuff because it just ain't fitting. Me, you know? I'm pulling out them Chico's. Uh, I, yeah, I, man, you got to. Yeah, because uh, I definitely can relate having to uh, deal with you know my my uh, long arms and broad shoulders over here, <laughs> you know, not fitting ninety percent of clothing. And I definitely know the issue with like ordering something from like Hong Kong, and it just like completely like, so, oh, like uh, yeah, I'll tell you two x it's coming at large. Is you be like, what happened? Like, come on, uh, uh, but um. So, uh, while uh, Urban fixes his uh connection over here, mm -hmm. all right. So, tell me a bit, tell me a bit more like your uh, in, I guess, uh, in con or in uh, in person ex uh, like experience with kind of the general uh populace or the people you know, if, if they're your fans or strangers or whatnot, like what is the experience like cosplaying? any of your characters and getting in like what kind of feedback do you get in person? Um, so, uh, really, I usually get real good feedback in person. Um, I get more negativity online, but in person, uh, usually I get real positive feedback because like I said, um, I just cosplay like real unique characters that mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't doing. Even when I did Omni Man at the, at the time I did Omni Man, like at DreamCon or at BlurCon, Nobody else had done Omni Man yet. You know, like it might have been a couple of people to do it online, but they didn't really have the following for people to really see it. So when I did Omni Man, you know, I was one of the first ones to do it. And I was one of the first ones to go to the con and do Omni Man. So like everybody, you know, wants a pitch, you know, because everybody knows that character. Everybody liked how I um, kind of presented him and how I executed it. So, you know, that went well. You know, so uh, in person, to ask that question, it usually goes pretty well. I usually don't get negative feedback in person. Okay. And, and you mentioned, 
you mentioned offline, it's it, it's typically negative. You, yeah. you want to expand on, on that one? Yeah, online, it's quite a different story, man. Like, uh, I want to say with every cosplay, I get called negative, unless the character's black already. If the character's black, usually I don't get too much negativity. But if the character, and mostly I do anime characters, which most anime characters aren't black, I get called nigga all the time. Every cosplay. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man, how bold they are online. Because I get called a nigga and, you know, black Yami. I'll be like, can I just be regular Yami? Shut up, nigga. Okay. <laughs> they really just but call you crazy. all like that. Yeah, man, it, it's so horrible. And, you know, when I first started, you know, like I told you. But I you know what, 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 what's interesting to me about that? Like, with. What? Oh, I nearly said. Uh, he's, he's having audio issues. Like oh, we okay, mentioned okay. before this. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, online, man, it's pretty bad. Like, I'll share to, especially if it's shared into like one of those groups that aren't even, even groups that aren't American groups. So one time, um, my Gojo, which is one of my most popular cosplays, it mm -hmm. got shared into a Filipino group. Man, they were calling me nigger. They were calling me monkey. I mean, they were calling me like some pretty horrible stuff, man. And uh, when I first started cosplaying, I used to argue back. You know, I used to argue back because uh, I was I was 305, so I was getting fat shamed. Then I was getting called nigger. And so I'd be like, oh, your mama like this fat dick. And, you know, I'll be sitting there trying to argue back. And uh, once I started getting, once I got to like 10,000, I realized there's no point in arguing back anymore because it's just so many people. You'll be arguing all day with people you'll never talk, like people I'll never talk to again. You know, like, it's just like, okay, I'm going to just block them. And keep it moving, and that's that's pretty much how uh, I deal with it now. You know. Uh, yeah, that, that's. I mean, it, it's honestly, uh, you know, pro call with that many people. It's like, yeah, you're you're more so exhausted energy at that point. Yeah, uh, unnecessary man. energy. Yeah, because um, you know, like on Facebook, I'm at thirty uh, two thousand followers now. So it's like. I, I can't argue with that many people. Like, I'll, that's going to burn me out. That's going to hurt my experience with cosplaying. Like, you know, I, I need good vibes and good energy. So now mm -hmm. I just I just block them and keep it moving. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's that negative energy that uh, I don't think anybody really wants to tolerate through the day. And not to mention, right. you know, as you experience, you know, you, you do address it. Uh, at a certain point, is it, 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 you know you really feel that you're you're really like like gosh I, I really just spent like all this time going back and forth with this person and what did I get out of it? <laughs> yeah, but, they, they um, want anything to do. They want your attention. That's why they're doing. They're doing it for attention. So it's like if you sit there and argue with them, you're giving them what they want. And they'll some of these trolls, man. They'll argue all day. That's all. They'll, they'll argue all day. They'll and then you know and the worst are when you block them. And then they've created multiple accounts, so they just get back <laughs> on there. Yeah, man, they just jump yeah. back on there and start commenting under it. It's like, didn't I just block you? Like, oh, uh, that's why I'm so glad Instagram has a feature now where they're like, block the person or block the person and yeah, any I found out about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm so glad they got that. I'll be blocking like, uh, uh, you ain't getting me. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they came out with that feature too. Yeah, definitely. Um, man. We got Irvin cutting back in here. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm like having a little technical difficulties on my end. It's all good. It's all good. It happens. Okay. Um, shoot, what was I gonna ask you? Because uh, I'm like, I kind of, I'm like, I don't even know where you guys just left off at. Really, you a big question. I was like, I was like, hey, y'all miss this question? Or... Yeah, oh no. Yeah, you... Oh no. Go ahead. What were you saying? No, yeah, you you were you were uh, commenting on the. Uh... Kind of the uh, negative feedback online. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I know what I, where we're going with that. Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was curious about uh, more so. Like, I mean, of course, I can. I would expect that that would um, would uh, happen. But one of the things that I think is interesting about whenever you have people get on, you know, like you know, like a lot of us or whatever out here, you know, a lot of us people of color, black people who cosplay or you know, dress up as like you know, and do um, you know, like 
anime characters, right? Mm. Somebody say, oh, they're not black. But I'm like, a lot of the people that are saying that aren't Japanese, you know? So right, I'm like, right. That's the big thing. It's like, yo, you do realize they're not white either. It's like, yeah. they're, they're definitely not white. <laughs> You know, so I'm like, it, it, to me, it kind of defeats the purpose. It's like, well, if that's the case, I'm like, there's a lot of characters that people can't um, actually portray. You know, they can't do their right. portray. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, you know, it's an art form. You know, people need yeah, to. It's art form. Yeah. You know, that's that's the, one of the things about cosplay. You know, and actually, you know, more so, I'm, I'm kind of um, curious. Like, so is there a particular cosplay out of all those that you've probably gotten the most like flack for, you know, like from people like online in particular, you know, about um, that? The most flack. Um, who do I get? Uh, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. Um, I want to say, yeah, it's hard for me to think of it. I, I probably would say Mario, since I've done Mario the most. Probably oh, really? Mario, because I've done so many variations. Like they just uh, each one they've called me nigger, you know what I'm saying? So it's like if I add that together, but um actually I take that back. I'll go back to Gojo again. Okay. Those groups, they yeah, like they took my Gojo cosplay and they put it in the hell group. Like uh it was like Juju, Jujutsu Kites and Hell. And those hell groups on Facebook are brutal, man. Like cause they don't have any rules. That's why I guess that's why they call it a hell group. But man, they were calling me all types of stuff from there, man. They were calling me monkey. Nigger, nigger Kaisen, nigger Gojo, like, like I'm telling you, everything in the book, they were they were throwing at me. I was like, dang man. And one one dude took a he took a picture of Gojo of the of the anime picture, and he literally like rounded it up and was like, this is not Gojo. And I was like, man. So they they're pretty brutal, man. Like that's probably the worst I've gotten things for Gojo, because Gojo, my my biggest cosplays have blown up the most. Uncle Iroh is probably the most because Nickelodeon shared it and so did um, the Avatar Studio shared it. So that blew up the most. And I got recognized by the voice actor on there. So, nice, nice, nice. I like hearing yeah, it. It did real well. Uh, but Gojo was second. Gojo was second because Gojo blew up too. And uh, But Gojo got so much heat. Like, it, was, it was ridiculous. I don't know why they even like went in on me that, mo that much, but they really went in on Gojo. Now, what what has been like the cosplay that's probably taken or been the hardest for you to actually craft? Because I'm I imagine different ones that would actually, you know, that the difficulty might kind of vary. So the cosplay I call like uh, my masterpiece from crafting was when I did Killmonger, because I did the mask for Killmonger, and that that took that took me about three months, and that was the first time I did a clay mold. So uh, yeah, and I, I literally carved that carved that clay. And if you see my Killmonger, like that mask looks very authentic. It looks real close to like the actual mask. And every time I got, every time I went to a con with it, everybody was like, "Where'd you buy that mask from?" I'm like, "I, I made it," because it looks better than the ones that they actually sell on Amazon. So I would say that's probably the hardest one I've ever done was that Killmonger mask, and what I did basically the Killmonger cosplay. So I can imagine, like, you know, obviously with having, you know, the skills to actually, wow, that looks that looks amazing. Because I had never actually seen it before. Until hey, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. You, like, with actually having to develop skills like that, like, have you ever, and I mean, perhaps maybe you have, and I may not have been aware of it, you know, um, so you, please enlighten us if this is the case. But uh, done any, like, um, costume design for, like, any, like, let's say productions, like, studios on, uh, like, films of any sort? Oh, no, no, I haven't had any uh, opportunities like that before, no. Like, um, purely uh, growing up, you know, I was into anime, into comics, and like I told you, uh, off screen, um, you know, I, I wrote, you know, a lot of fictional stories, a lot of manga, and then um, I tried to draw, you know what I'm saying? Of course, like a lot of people, I started off drawing Dragon Ball Z, and then it just evolved, to, uh, especially when I started like drawing black characters, and uh, I just, you know, once I was introduced to cosplay, that was kind of a way for me to be creative again. You know, so um, it, it wasn't drawing, but it was a way to get creative with building and new new skills I acquired to make these cosplays. So uh, I never had an opportunity, I guess, to work with the studio or anything like that. 
Okay. Like, would, would you ever want to? You know, is that something that, you know, if like if. Oh, if they, if they wanted to, like, especially for like character design or anything, yeah, sure, I'd jump on it. You know, okay. a lot of the characters I do, though, um, you know, they're, they're cosplay off of um, characters that they've already created. So there have been times where studios have wanted me to cosplay their characters. Uh, like um, a couple of months ago, uh, Warner Brothers, they reached out to Papa Bear. Uh, that I was telling you about earlier, and they reached out to me, and uh, they asked us to do Sub Zero and Scorpion, and that was before the introduction of the new Mortal Kombat movie. So that's why we did that, uh, you know, because I, I normally probably wouldn't have done Mortal Kombat because that just um, I had never been interested in doing those cosplays for it. But uh, yeah, they have reached out to us directly, and this was Warner Brothers, so of course we jumped on that opportunity, and that's when we did that one. So I've had opportunities like that. But never like any uh, creative, like create model characters or anything like that. No, interesting. Cause I just, I, I figured like with actually actively having to do that, like you would, like, because you, you'd be developing the skills to where, if, let's say it was even, I don't know, like, let's say, you know, like Marvel or something that's like, hey, we got a movie coming up. Can you, you know, help us, you know, on doing the, you know, like the design for the, you know, the aesthetic and everything like that? Like, I feel like yeah. it would be like a gold mine to go into the, uh, like the cosplay community and be able to pick out people who've put like, for example, like yourself, you know, their interpretation onto these characters and kind of giving it, you know, um, new life, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, you got some people who do that, but usually that's, that's a real close knit like section. That's, that's, it's, it's only a few of them. They usually choose for that. And it's usually the same people like evil Ted. Evil Ted is uh, a huge thing in the cosplay community as far as like building. And uh, he's done a ton of movies. So that's usually who they go after, you know, because he's he's done costume design for shows, costume design for movies. He's worked with Marvel. He's worked with DC. So usually that's what happens. They go after the same ones. And I understand, you know, he's been in the game for like 10 years. So, you know, I get it. Like, you know, it, it's hard to get in that network. Okay. Okay. Now we're at the, actually at the halfway mark of the stream. Real quick, we have to go ahead and give a quick shout out, and that is going to be to um, um, the Honeycomb Hideout. You know, you should see it there on the screen. So basically, the Honeycomb Hideout is basically a uh, stream. If you like, if you like Howard Stern, think of it as Howard Stern for geeks. You know, it's very raw. You know, straightforward. You know, on your nose to the point. You know, definitely a stream you want to check out from Imaginos Workshop. We'll put the link down below. And whenever you guys are done with this stream, you know, you can go ahead and check it out. Make sure you follow us on Spotify. Definitely a good listen. All right. Now we'll just go ahead and we'll get back to the matters at hand. Okay. So, of course, this year we had BlurredCon. You know, a lot of people have, of course, you know, talked about this BlurredCon because it's been very <laughs> interesting now. From my understanding, um, did you go to BlurCon this past year? I was there. Okay, okay. Before I even get to the question that probably a lot of people are anticipating I might ask, um, how was this BlurCon from your perspective this past year? You know, of course, with COVID and everything, you know, uh, going on. Okay, so outside of, like, you know, the big controversy that happened this year, I thought BlurCon was great. Um, coming off of like the quarantine and this being like, this was my first con and it was a lot of friends of mine and a lot of friends that I met online that were going. So that made it such an experience because, you know, we're in quarantine, you know, so we didn't see anybody, especially people that live in like other states that I would only see like through going to cons and stuff. I hadn't seen them in like a year, you know, so it was a great feeling to hang out with everybody again talk with everybody, party with them, you know what I'm saying? So BlurCon was, uh, I had a great experience. You know? Okay, okay, yeah, because I can imagine, because didn't everybody have to be, what, vaccinated to go or, you know, to be Yeah, in? so to buy a BlurCon badge, you had to be vaccinated. And, of course, to, like, get into BlurCon, walk around the hotel, you had to get their badge, and their badge was a mass this year. Okay, okay, yeah, I figured, I'm like, that's what I, at least from what I've seen on social media, I even had, uh, you know, a couple of friends that actually drove all the way from 
from freaking Michigan to go all the way to BlurCon. So I was like, you know, I always see those those BlurCon music videos or whatever. I'm like, man, everybody looks like they're just having i just- I'll tell you, it's a fun time, man. Because, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people might have their issues with BlurCon, but if you're talking about as far as the people, you know, it's, it's, it's a great experience because it's only a few cons that are predominantly black, and that's one of them. You know. Yeah, I can imagine. I can definitely imagine. You know, so of course, you know, with this year, you know, um, one of the things you think about with like a con like BlurCon, it's usually typically used to uplift, you know, people of color, you know, and yeah. in this case, you know, one would think, you know, out of the people of color, it would be used to uplift black people. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious, what is your take on the uh, controversy on the um, the, the um, process that was chosen on the winner of the contest for BlurCon this year. Okay, so I get what the judges were saying when they were like, hey, we want to pick the best person, but I feel like this. If BlurCon promotes this is a black con, I do feel like there should be some restrictions on who can who competes, you know. Really? Okay. And, and not even and you know, I, I already think that for their cosplay contest, it's an overall thing, and I already think that's a problem. Like for cosplay contests, at least some of the, the better cons I've been to, or the other cons, I'm necessarily better, but other cons I've been to, there's categories like there's a category for builders who build armor builds, cosplays, and there's a category for people who do like fabrics and seamstress. Those are two different categories, but Blur kind of has them in the same category. So, you know, now that already throws in a problem because there's a significant difference if you've sold a whole dress together and you do that immaculate compared to if somebody just does like a perfect armor build. You know, that's just dramatically different. So the judges in for BlurCon tried to say, hey, she sold all that stuff together herself, and it was amazing. But I'm like, why was she even in the contest? You know, I don't have any problem with white people. I don't have any problem. Look, but BlurCon is supposed to be a space for us. So, and, and I get what the con runners were trying to say. The con runners, they did try to say, like, hey, we're inclusive, we're not exclusive, we're not excluding anybody. But I do think that if you're gonna promote being the, for, for a while, they're promoting being the only black comic. So let's make it for black people. If they do have someone who isn't black, who wants to compete, make a category for it. But I do think it should be something specifically for us. Okay, okay. Now I have a, a follow-up question to that, you know, okay. just kind of because I'm. This is just some things I, I could hear a lot of people probably saying, you know, because I've heard yeah. arguments on both ends. So I always just yeah, find yeah. This I've heard a lot of, it's, it's real. It's a real uh, splitter of the community about oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that? Okay, for example, because we know that the um, the uh, you know young lady that uh, that uh, won the contest originally, you know, of course, you know she put in the time, she put in the effort to go ahead and you know stream it together and did a great job mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. Do you think that that is ba- basically almost like a um, disservice in some ways? This is just you know again, this is just a, a um, argument that I've heard right mm-hmm. to us to say that she has to essentially not compete in order to give us a fair chance to win. Okay. So I don't think this is what I've heard. I, I, I necessarily don't look at it like that, but I do get the, the theory because so I've, I've won cosplay contests before. So when I've gone to these cons and entered, I wouldn't want to compete against people who aren't on my level. And that means if they're white, they're Asian, I want to whoop everybody's ass. So I don't want to just whoop black people's ass. But this is at a con that's for everybody. You know, this is at a general con. If I go to Dragon Con and compete, I know I'm not competing against just black people. I know this this isn't a con for just black people. So, of course, I know I'm going to compete against other races. That's what I came there for. Now, 
with the theory of, oh, do we have to make it just for black because we won't win? No, that's not why she won. She didn't win because of race. She won because she's a great seamstress. But I do think that there's two overarching messages. So you have the message of, well, are we talking about craftsmanship or are we talking about the overall theme for this whole convention? And so the overall theme for black people to me would trump the craftsmanship part. Now, I also feel that she was on like a master's level too, because she's won competitions before. But everybody she competed against, none of them had won any competitions or anything like that. So also, no one did any due diligence to find out that this woman is at master's level already. So that was an issue too. So, but you know, like I said, back to back to your point though, um, I don't feel that we need to handicap the the contest because only black people can be black people and we can't be the white people. I don't think it's like that, you know. But I get I get the logic though. But I know that there are several black cosplayers, if they would have come to BlurCon and competed, and some of them that were there, if they would have just competed, they would have took her down. They just didn't compete because at a black convention, you're not thinking like that. You're not thinking like, oh man, this is a white girl entering the concert. We didn't even think that was gonna happen. You know, so when it happens and you hear about it, it's like, oh man, damn, I should have competed and took her ass down. But you wouldn't think that was even gonna happen. You didn't think that issue was gonna come up. Okay, okay, no, interesting. You know, I'm like, I, like, I always find this whole topic because when, when this first happened, it was like you you really there's so many different ways you can look at it you know if, I, I mean that's why i said i could see from so many angles people's points and you know all i can do is at the end of the day just say what i feel is right but i'm very afrocentric so like oh, i'm man, always going to be like hey she shouldn't even been in it but i do get the logic in where people are saying like okay well are we scared to beat them and i'm like but it's not about beating them it's about a black con and black people having a good time Versus other black people in a cosplay contest for black people, you know. So, so, do you think that if, let's say, for example, I'm just going to use BlurCon, right? Where to say, mm -hmm. okay, we're not, we're no longer going to allow anyone who is not a person of color to compete in the contest. Do you think that that is essentially cheapening the experience for anybody who's not a person of color to come to the it's convention. It's too late. It's too late now. They don't play they don't play that card. You can't restrict them now. Because going back to your point, that will be what people say. They can't be white people. But they scared to be white. They scared to be the against white people. So now you don't open the veil. But there's a flip side to that coin. Now real ass cosplayers who are real good are gonna compete. And so yeah now they yeah so to answer your question now they can't even do that. They can't even do that. But like I said the good thing is real cosplayers are gonna actually and not not to diss anybody that lost to them, but other master cosplayers are gonna compete in that competition at Blur Con. Okay, yeah definitely I can imagine because <laughs> I'm like yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm actually surprised to be honest with you because I've seen a lot of I well, saw, we saw that, man. I'm telling you, we were like, look, we, I mean, so it was actually uh, my boy, I Blue Cosplay. And uh, matter of fact, Supreme, I mean, Never Ending Dreams Cosplay. Both of them have won tons of competitions. They immediately made posts like, uh uh, I'm in them next year. Because they saw that, they were like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> so, yeah, man. And then a couple of people even tagged me, like, yo, you were there. Why you ain't in her? I was like, I didn't know this was going to happen. Like, shoot, if I had even had a remote thought like that, I probably would have tried to hit him. You know? Basically, losing your own back, you know, backyard. <laughs> right, right. Like, uh uh, what are you about to? Nah, hell no. Uh uh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really, her craftsmanship was good, but if you look at the cosplay, it, it was pretty basic. The craftsmanship, no doubt about it, was great. But that was car captor Sakura. That that really wasn't an intense like looking cosplay. It was pretty basic. I, I get hey, I so love to her, not hating, but it, it wasn't that much to write home about. A lot of people will not remember what she even cosplayed. You know, 
So, like, look, all right, you want to play that game? Oh, man, I would have came with the heat. But, see, like I said, nobody knew it was going to go like that. So you've judged competitions before. Like, what do you usually, like, uh, look for when you're judging? So there are several ways on how I judge, right? So at DreamCon uh, that was a couple months ago, at, right at, like a week later after BlurCon, um, DreamCon is another con that's predominantly black. They have several categories. We got master level. We got beginner level. Then we got people's choice. Then we got um, judge's choice. Then we got a top two. So you got a lot of categories where people can excel at and win. You know? And yeah, yeah, everybody at the master's level are going to compete against other masters, not against everybody else. You know, so when I do judge... Uh, so how do you identify a master? Like, what do you need to be in order to be considered a master? So if you've entered... Over three cosplay contests. If you've placed at any cosplay con, I, I, at over three. If you've competed and placed in over three, if you won any, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what qualifies you to enter the masters level. Because so does it matter <laughs> like how big or small the cosplay contest is? Like, you know, what if someone's like, yeah, you know, I won, you know, at a, uh, you know, my buddy's cosplay contest in his backyard. You know? So let's say if it was only yeah 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 because the thing is I can Google you if I if, if the cosplay is if the cosplay contest is big enough or the convention or event and I Google it and you popped up as one I would consider that as you won a cosplay contest before you know so because on Google it's not gonna show me like oh there was only three people in the competition it's gonna say you won a cosplay contest so I'm gonna be like okay you're going in the master's bracket you know. Um, because we had a matter of fact, the girl who won is you bring up a good point. The girl who won at DreamCon this year, she literally, literally only in her one contest before, but she won first place mm. in her DreamCon contest, won in first place again. So she, hey, so she's taking heads off. She only, yeah, she only entered one before that and she won. So it's like, look, if, if you beat some people, that means, hey. You know, that that's how we're looking at you. We're looking at you as someone who won the competition. You know, now I'm sure other like very humongous conventions like Dragon Con or New York Comic Con or San Diego, they probably do things a little different. But for like conventions with like five, no, no more than ten thousand people, like Dream Con and Blur Con, it's a little different. You know. Okay. Okay. So have you actually like? Um... Cause I know BlurCon's really not that old. Have you ever been a judge at BlurCon at any at any point? Or? No, I've never been a blur, uh, judge at BlurCon. So my first BlurCon was actually this 2021. Okay, so that was the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because usually BlurCon's at the same time as Anime Expo, and Anime Expo is in Los Angeles, and I usually guess at Anime Expo. So this year I didn't guess the Anime Expo, so I was able to go to BlurCon. Oh yeah, you know we all know. You know, obviously, like. I don't think anybody really knew what was going on with the conventions this year at all. Like, you know, a lot of them. Yeah, were... yeah. it's like Russian roulette. You know what I'm saying? You might, you might find out a month before that, like, oh, this convention still happened. You know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. Uh, but no, no, I, I still had a good, you know, I'm sad that Blurcon's cosplay contest went like that, but I still had a good time. You know? But yeah, as far as the cosplay contest is concerned, I would definitely switch up the groups as far as like master level and immediate. And I would definitely switch up the groups for like um, as far as armor and uh, seamstress and sewing and stuff. You got to switch those up because them competing against each other, that's a hard thing to scale. And if they're not using a point system to scale, then, you know, it's, it's hard to judge that. Because uh, back, back to what you just said, um, or your question, yeah, usually you judge on hairstyle, you judge on makeup, you judge on um, the sewing factor, you judge on the foam factor or the armor factor. Like, there's a list where you literally give out points to all those. That's why usually the people who win have done several things immaculately. They have a piece of armor that you, when you look at, it's immaculate. Plus, they've sewn some stuff. 
come with that. That's immaculate. And then they might have like a great wig on with that. That's why those type of people end up winning because it's like, okay, they've checked everything. So they get max points for each of these categories. What do you think about our uh, giving the award back? Do you think they should have accepted that back or? No, nah, no, nah, nah. she got to keep it. We done fucked up now. We done gave it to her. Mm-hmm. You get it now. Yeah, yeah. No take backs. Because now, now it's going to look like she's doing us a favor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If she, if she really understood the gravity, I don't think she should have even competed. Now, maybe she didn't know it was going to go like this. I don't really see how she couldn't have thought this. If, if, if she really understood the message of BlurCon, I don't think she would have even competed. But I don't think she... I'm not going to say she didn't care. I'll just say she didn't understand the full message. And she competed anyway. And she didn't care that she wasn't competing against other people on her level. And she took, she took the dub. And then when she started getting all that flack on the internet, now, I do think it was wrong for the people who were giving her death threats. That was... That was out of control. But she started getting so much heat on the internet that she's like, oh, I want to give it back. I'm, you know, I am a supporter. And, you know, it's like, okay. I'll, but if I was blurred, I'll show her. No, you got to keep it. You got to keep it now. We already gave it to you. You know. No so, yeah, I don't, I don't like, Yeah, I don't like they let her, I don't like that they let her do that. I don't like yeah. that she tried to do that. Like, no, no. What's done is done. You don't get the redos are over. It's no, it's no redos in life. Like next year, we'll just have an ask for it. You know. Mm-hmm. But I told you, that's what I said before, man. I'm a real pro black man. So it's like oh no, I'm to, you know what I'm saying? I'm a protester, so it's like uh oh, I'm man. with you on that. Trust me. Yeah. Trust and, me and, that. She she it's not all her to blame, you know. I, you know, I, like I said, I, I hope that she didn't realize the gravity of it. But you know, like the judges, I think had played a part too. They should have known, like, okay, you know, maybe we, maybe she shouldn't be in the same category as everybody else, or maybe we should do something different about it. You know, and but it just didn't happen like that. You know. So we're running into the. Uh... Pretty much the last bit of the uh of the segment here so i think it's time we roll into the traditional stuff oh yeah the the um interesting uh um monumental big questions that we like to ask <laughs> of course first up uh you got any rivals i know you mentioned your mentors but uh anybody you compete against friendly rivalries uh so or we'll let this he wants when it comes to cosplay, I'm I'm still on the Afrocentric tip and still on that pro-black tip. So I'm trying to bring us up together. So the people I look at, my rivals are very different from what a lot of people would think. I'm not nobody, no black cosplayer do I look at as a rival. I've reached out to so many, even now, I've reached out to Black cosplayers who are up and coming or who have similar followers to mine, which isn't much. You know, it's only about 10 of us that have cracked. Actually, on Facebook, I really feel like it's only maybe three of us who have cracked 30,000. So I've reached out to them and I try to work with them. My rivals, I feel like, are the white ones that are just like murdering because I don't really think they're that, they're not doing it on a level that's like passing us up. So they should, if they're doing that well, we should do that well. So my rivals, I would consider is Leon Shiro, uh, Gantz cosplay, Maul cosplay, and these are white cosplayers. And their cosplay followers are like 300,000, 200,000. It's like, and I tag, I tag them on my posts too when I cosplay. Like Leon Shiro, he does a lot of JoJo. So when I did, when I got recognized by Biz, and uh, I did uh, Old Man Joseph. I tagged me out here on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming for like, you. Look, you. You know I'm coming. You know I'm, you know I'm here, and you know I'm coming for you. I want he knows. Like I don't I don't try to hide it. Like look, like you are you are great at what you do, but you're not the only one. 
Yeah, hey, I don't. Know. I'm right here. Like, no. So I want them to know, like, hey, you know, we're not, I'm not playing with them. And they're, and they're good. They're good. I'm not taking that away from them. They're very excellent at what they do. But you know, we're, we're good too, man. We 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 just as good. You know, it's just not getting recognized like them. Oh, it'd be like you know, like I'm I'm on my way, you know. Right, right. I'm on my way. I just picture that I could be like them, just sitting there, kind of just like, let's see what you got, you know. No, I mean he liked it. He he liked it. He commented. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I like about it because they know it's like, look, I don't gotta sit there and talk shit. I'm gonna just tag you. I'm gonna say, hey, you, you see, you see what I'm working with, you know. The, now one of them, Dr. Sarah Rock with Tara cosplay. Who is he's one of the top dogs too? He's got like three hundred thousand followers. Uh, Taron cosplay. He actually uh, has reached out about working again, but he was the only one. All the rest of them, they like they they know it's like okay, this is competition. But he was like, all right. He was like, look, we don't got to be enemies. We can actually work together. Like, all right, you know, I can I can work with that. All right. Actually, that that, that was actually a question I wanted to ask you earlier. Uh, you know, is there anybody in particular? that you want to collab with? Uh, definitely Night Mage, man. Like I told you, he was one of the first ones to really like give me tips on how to start cosplaying. Uh, it was him and Papa Bear. But I've done, like I said, the Mario with Luigi, and I've done several different cosplay groups with Papa Bear. I haven't done any with Night Mage yet. So I definitely want to like collab with him and do something, because he's like always cranking out new ones, like at least like once a week. So I'm like, all right, man, let's let's get this going. You know, let's let's pick something. Let's go ahead and make, you know, make a change, you know. So Okay. Well, yeah, nice, nice. I know um Cutie Pie Sensei. She's another real good one. Cutie Pie Sensei is great. Cutie Pie. So I would I want to work with her. I know you guys heard of Cutie Pie Sensei before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd I'd love to work with her because like her cosplays are just amazing. Even her like regular, like you know, her fabric builds are just like amazing. So I would love to do a group for her too. Nice. Well, I'm like, I'm like, if they're watching, you know, <laughs> definitely, uh, you know, you already know what it is. You know, send. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys probably already talking. If you don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so the first Omni Man I did was casual Omni Man, the one we in the house, and mm -hmm. that one blew up. And I want to say partly it was because of Cutie Pie Sensei because she shared it on her page. There, that one. There we go. Yeah. She had shared that on her page and that hit uh, 10,000 uh, likes in a day. Oh, wow. So, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. This, so, yeah, she had put that. So, she might have been one of the key factors that put Omni Man on the map. I don't know. You know, but Omni Man was recognized. That was another one out. It was recognized by like Amazon Prime and, mm -hmm. you know, Skybound uh, Comics. And Robert Kirk at the creator. So it, it did get recognized by a lot of people, but she shared it first. So I got, you know, it yeah, might get her credit, her credit is due. Right, right. Hey, that's what I like to do, man. I know a lot of people try to, like, like well, I did this and I do this. I try to, you know, give people credit because it might have really been because of her sharing it that people saw it. That means people saw it first. So, you know, I give people that credit, man. I don't mind. Giving people their props like Papa Bear, you know, or her, because they were a part of my journey, you know. And you got to, once you respect the journey and understand your journey, that's when you can keep moving forward. I love the fact that you said that. And like, you have a lot of humility. I have to say that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, man. I, I'm telling you, man, like, it's, you got to enjoy what you do and you got to enjoy every part of it, you know, every part you might not enjoy but you'll enjoy your part in it, you know, or how it made you grow from it. You know, uh, like I told you before, I get called a nigger all the time, but the difference, the reason why I can enjoy that part now is because I know how I used to be when it first started happening. I was getting my feelings hurt. I was arguing back, da, 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 da. Now I realize like I'm doing this well that so many people got some bullshit to say. That's how well I'm doing. I'm not bothering nobody. I'm just having fun. But it's killing them inside. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you realize that, that's when you get to enjoy that part. Like, okay, I'm doing something right. And I'm going to keep doing it. That's what art is about. You know? That's what art is about. You know what I'm saying? And I try to explain this to people, man. When you're an artist, you want as many people as possible to see your artwork. And they, they might call me nigger. But, hey, that's a part of the process. A million people are not going to like your work. But a million people see it. So you got to be happy with it. 
So. Oh yeah, no, I'm 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 gonna agree with you there. <laughs> you know, so that actually is a perfect segue to our final question that we, you know, it's our traditional question. Okay. What is your end game? To be honest, you know, and that's a question I think a lot of cosplayers that do well or who don't meet their expectations have. When I say don't meet their expectations, they might not blow up and be just like this cosplay sensation that they thought they were. They would think like, well, what's my end game? Um, I always did cosplay because it was fun and it was a way for me to be creative. My cre it was a way for me to jump back into my creativity when I thought my creativity days were done. So for me, the end game, even, even and I have gotten paid to cosplay. I do get sponsorships. I do get to, you know, work at the children's hospitals. You know, I get I get to do a lot of fulfilling things. And for me, that's enough. So I don't mind co continuing the path that I've done with cosplay. I don't need a grand, you know, like in game because I've already achieved those things that I want to achieve and I love redoing it. You know, when I had my first cosplay that cracked over a million views, all I want to do is make another one that cracked over a million views. Then I want to make another one that cracked over two million views. You know, that's that's how I started looking at things once it started happening. And it's like once you do that and you have that enjoyment, it's not about the end. Cause it's like now my little nephews want to get into it. And little inner city kids in Chicago, you know, kids from the hood, they want to learn how to build props, you know, and that's just going to keep happening. So for me, the, there is no end game particularly. There's just more goals that I want to achieve and that I want to keep going now. You know? I love that answer. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. I'm telling you, man, it can be, you got to love what you do, man. And that's, like I said, art and writing was my passion growing up, but I never got to, once I joined the military and, you know, once I like took life real serious, I never really got to tap back into it until when I accidentally went to Dragon Con. And then that's when I saw cosplay and that, that gave me that light again, you know, that creativity light. It, it gave me a way to enjoy just like, my own thoughts and my own interest in you know doing these things again it just it just it was that was that was the end game for me the enlightenment when i got to do these things again you know nice 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 mm -hmm. you know with that being said did you have any closing thoughts or anything that you wanted to say to anybody um you know, in terms of, um, you know, whether it be anybody who's interested in, you know, cosplay on the fence, you know, or just anything in general? Yeah, uh, so if you are someone who is interested in cosplaying, like I said, my first time, I was 305 pounds. I'll, I'll, I'll always say this, but now I'm like 230, so I, I lost 70 pounds, but when I first started, I was way overweight, and I was doing Spider-Man and stuff. So, look, man, like, if you are a cosplayer you want to start, you don't have to do some grand cosplay to start out with. It's never going to be some perfect storm We have all the pieces and you're like, oh man, this cosplay is perfect. It's going to go viral. You're never going to have that perfect storm. But if you want to start off and you want to like slowly get into it and be more comfortable with it, whether you're overweight or black or anything, do a simple t-shirt cosplay. Do Superboy from Young Justice where he just has the black t-shirt. Do like care anime characters who just like might have on like a school uniform or a school gym uniform. Do something basic and simple and then expand after that. Okay, I felt comfortable walking around everybody dressed as Miles Morales, but I had my hoodie and shorts on. So I was comfortable as hell. What would happen if I decided to do Superman next? You know, slowly start off. And then I guarantee you, everything will fall into place. Nice, nice, nice. Nico, did you have anything you wanted to say before we close out? <laughs> want to uh, thank you again for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me. You, know, you, you, you said a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, that it definitely uh, gave a lot of uh, insight, limelight into uh, 
to our cosplay community, especially uh, on the black end of things. And uh, for anybody that's aspiring to go down this path or even questioning it, you know, I, I do think you gave uh, uh, quite a bit the uh, inf information and inspiration. So again, you know, thank you for that. Thank hey, you I appreciate the, the kind words, brother. Appreciate the kind words. Well, I appreciate you coming on as well today. You know, uh, you know, definitely, we're gonna go ahead and link the uh, both of uh, Venture Bros cosplays down below, like his uh, pages to this cosplay. So you know, you go ahead, and make sure you follow him on Instagram if you're not already following him, of course. And the same thing with on <laughs> Facebook, so you can see the latest stuff that he's putting up. You know, and of course. I'm sure that um, you know Chicago POC is open. So if you're in you know the area, I'm sure that you know I'm, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm I'm assuming that you're welcoming based on what everything yeah, yeah. everybody's today. welcome. If you live in if you live in the Midwest, you're pretty much welcome. You, you go to Chicago cons, you know you're welcome. I know a lot of people come from out of town and go to our convention. So hey, you know, come join us, man. Be a part of the group, man. Join the Chicago POC. All right, all right. Next guest that we're having on will be the founder of Anime News Network. So make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel and to the Facebook page so you can go ahead and follow the updates. We're almost to the end of the season. So that is going to be the second to last interview of the season. You know, the last one will be after that. And of course, you know, then you guys won't see the, the, uh, the Shining Spotlight segment for a little while. We'll have other stuff on the channel. But make sure you subscribe to follow along and just to catch up with everything. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Hit that like button, and we will see you guys later. Shining lights. Catch y'all later. <laughs>